Hi, I'm John, the banking systems engineer, Termel. And this is my message to former engineering student and new prime minister of Canada, Justin Trudeau, on the use of central bank accounts to shut down the middlemen loan sharks who are bleeding us dry. Hi, Justin. I'm John, the engineer, Termel, former teaching assistant of the mathematics of gambling course, great Canadian gambler. And I always thought you were the best bet of the major party leaders to right an injustice. Now, you may remember me back in the 1980s. I used to pick at the Bank of Canada every Thursday when they set the mortgage death gamble interest rate. And I'd go up to Parliament Hill and pick, pick at the opening of Parliament. So if you were ever in the limo when Daddy was showing up uh, at the House of Commons, you might have seen me outside with a white hard hat protesting. So here are some of the what it could have looked like. You might have seen this at some point in your career. And the next one. So many, many times you can see the guy with the white hard hat picketing. Here's my brother getting Jean Chrétien with the Bowie. That's Gerald Bowie, king of white collar crime. He was the governor of the Bank of Canada. So what would we have said about? Well, in 1979, I ran for Parliament to legalize gambling because I had been the team, you know, I had wanted, I got tired of being raided, running underground games. I wanted to play blackjack and poker legally. And uh, people asked me about inflation. And I said to myself, gee, how come the casino chips in my casino don't inflate, but the government's chips, coinage, they do. It's the same hardware. And I figured, wow, inflation must be a software problem. When I did that on Dragon's Den, they cut off the punchline, but inflation must be a software problem if these infl don't inflate and these do. So I did an engineering analysis and I came to the conclusion that interest is the cause of inflation. And we've been told that interest fights inflation. So let's take a look at what happened in our history with the national debt. Now you'll notice, when did the spike happen? Well, the spike started in 1974, during your father's reign. And something else happened in 1968. Well, here's what happened. In 1968, your father removed the 6% cap on interest rates and let the criminal code 60% high suffice. Now you'll notice there's almost no debt, no debt service in all these years before your father. But then in 1974, he stopped using the Bank of Canada for interest-free loans and started going to the chartered banks and taxing us to pay them interest. And there you can see the growth of the national debt because Pierre stopped using the interest-free Bank of Canada. Now, you gotta fix it. Now, when I was picketing the Bank of Canada, for instance, there was me. Why wait for 20, for 60% protest now? And of course, I'd go up to Parliament Hill as well. Well, over those years of protesting, I can even point out that my grandfather, a carver, who carved this wood statuette of your father on top of the Bank of Canada, not listening to the picketers below because my grandfather joined me when we picketed the Bank of Canada. Adelard was a fervent advocate of sociable credits, interest-free loans at the Bank of Canada, and he was there, and then he carved this, showing how your father wasn't listening. Okay, now, your father was a lawyer, and most lawyers are the bottom of the barrel when it comes to math. Nobody knows how his handlers convinced him to lift the cap on interest rates. And nobody knows how the handlers convinced him to stop using the Bank of Canada interest-free and going to get us into debt at interest-bearing banks. But he did that. So you're the engineer. You're the one with the two years of engineering, right? Of all the candidates, you're the guy claiming two years of engineering against the economist, ah, Harper, and the two other lawyers. 
You're the only guy with a science background. And I know that getting past first year engineer means you probably could have made it and have an iron ring like me. But I can also understand, you know, 40 hours of courses, 40 hours of homework and labs compared to 20 hours in political science and 60 hours in socializing, what's going to benefit your future career? I don't blame you for dropping out of engineering, but you got there. So I can't make fun of the low techs for their ignorance of following the math, but I can of you if you don't listen. Now, I'm going to point out that I in, uh, have been advocating and I've run in a Guinness number of elections after that to have interest-free banking. And I point out that Q quantitative easing for the people in the UK by Jeremy Corbyn just proposed is the same thing as what the Comer people are asking for the Bank of Canada in Canada in court last week. They want interest-free Bank of Canada or Bank of England loans to pay for infrastructure. Now, in Scotland, they're talking about a Bitcoin-like digital currency called Scotcoin or Scott Pounds. And in Greece, during the crash, before they fixed their loans, they were talking about Plan B, which was give everybody a digital account. Well, what's the difference? Well, when I have a digital account at my central bank, my central bank doesn't have deposits. So, I can borrow chips from my central bank just like a casino, based on my promise to repay it, interest-free. Then I can go and I can pay off, cut checks to settle all my mortgages, student loans, interest-bearing debts below to the loan shark banks. And after that, all my payments go against principal. And someday I'm out of debt. Well, I have managed to, in this election, you've been successful, I've been successful. I produced a slate at smartestman dot, a smartest man on earth dot ca slash smart team of candidates from 12 different small political parties to support Bank of Canada accounts for the citizens, not just for the governments. Just like the Scott Coin and the Plan B, digital online accounts for the citizens at the Bank of Canada, interest free. So, I have my coalition. I managed to convince 12 different political philosophies to unite behind one great idea, especially since it's already coming out elsewhere around the world. We could have been first if our movement had gone viral and we got in instead of you. And we'd have fixed Pierre's, Pierre Elliott Trudeau's national debt, the pet debt, and ended it. Well, now you have to end the pet debt by doing the reform that we've been fighting for. See this cartoon here that I've used in this election? There's me with the Let's program in front of the SysOp at the Bank of Canada. And there's you on the other side with no program. So, we know what's happened with the national debt since we haven't been able to use the Bank of Canada's computer. And right now we know that the monkey is the better bet to fix things than you are. But it doesn't have to stay that way, okay? Marijuana. I'm leading the fight for repeal, and I think that saying that you're trying to protect the kids from something that may be dangerous, when it's probably the best thing for the kids or possibly be compared to Ritalin and Prozac and alcohol and cocaine and all those other horrible drugs to have something as mild as marijuana muffins. So, don't give me this bit about want to protect the kids because University of Saskatchewan in 06 found that marijuana grows new brain cells. So it's not just good for Alzheimer's victims. I don't see any reason why kids shouldn't be growing new brain cells, especially after they've been vaccinated and fluoridated their whole youth. Number two, foreign affairs. How you can say you want to tell something to Putin to his face means you either have forgotten that the issue about Crimea was that back in the 50s, the Ukrainian communist leader Khrushchev gave Crimea to the Ukraine while they were together. And then a couple of months before the Ukrainian election, after the split up, 
couple of months before the U.S. has a coup. So they can't vote them out. The U.S. gunned them out. And they put in these puppets, U.S. puppets. And of course, what would you want to do if you were Crimea? They had a referendum. And over 90% said, we want to go back to Russia. So what are you going to tell Putin to his face? You don't believe in referendums? You want to spend 56,000 million, 56 billion on warplanes to protect us from Putin? Is that it? Or are we going to be using them to attack other nations like we've started to do? I think you should get out of those wars as fast as you can and bring all our troops home. All right? We shouldn't be involved in these fights at all. And finally, Justin, all of the parties in the House of Commons are pushing global warming like it's real, despite the fact that it's been getting colder for 18 years, and despite the fact they were caught in the climate gate scandal, admitting that they had used a trick in the statistics to hide the decline. Well, if you didn't notice it's getting colder, they admitted they lied. So how can you be on the side of the guys with the lies? Now, I understand. You don't need the hassle of being called a denier during a campaign. But it's time to stand up and deny that the world is getting warmer as it gets colder. And I've proved it to myself umpteen times by forcing every global warming hoaxer to back down from a $100 bet when I say it's going to be colder next year. All right? When they won't bet, what do you think? So please get off that. And on that note, I'm going to say that other nations are going to organize some kind of a slate for central bank accounts in their nations. Because once we get a central bank account, we don't have to deal with the middlemen loan sharks anymore. So you can deliver us from our debts, as we forgive our debtors, if you'll just give us access to the Bank of Canada's computer and take that let's system software away from the monkey and you put it in and be a hero forever.